For the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about plots and plotting, which is essentially the same thing, I suppose. We'll talk about the different parts of plots, some common plot structures, and maybe have some conversations about how to plot out a novel. We are kicking things off by talking about subplots. It is very hard to write a novel-length work without incorporating at least one subplot. Even a very complex and depth-filled main plot is going to have trouble keeping a reader engaged for the length of a novel. That's where the subplots come in. Now, there are some genres that do this. Thrillers and mysteries are good examples where the focus is very much on one main plot of the book. Although even these stories will often have a character arc or a romance thrown in for good measure, so they aren't completely devoid of subplots. Subplots work to add depth to a story and can be a useful tool for managing the tension and pacing of a story. They allow us to explore different characters and different parts of the setting that we wouldn't necessarily see if we only focused on the main plot. When executed well, a subplot not only supports the main plot, but enhances it. Often we learn a lot about character backstories and the setting of a story through subplots. Now, like with anything, it's also possible to write a less than stellar subplot. A poorly written subplot will seem disjointed from the main plot. It will break the story's tension and bore the reader. It might provide too much conflict to the point that it overwhelms the main plot, or it might not provide enough conflict. A well-executed subplot is an asset for your story. A poorly written one is a problem. So to help you avoid that, here are three tips for writing good subplots. Tip number one, use a subplot to explore a secondary character. While the main hero of the story is off dealing with the main plot, the rest of your cast shouldn't be just standing around. I love a subplot where we get to see an interesting side character work towards a goal or go through some kind of arc. Anything that gets us in the head of someone who isn't the protagonist. There is no better way to develop a character than having them work through a subplot. Well, I suppose having them work through the main plot would also do the same thing, but I digress. Here it's important to make sure that the goals and motivations of the side character are well developed. The thing that they are pursuing in the subplot should fit in with who they are as a character. The subplot should also be structured like any other plot. By that I mean it should have a structure like any plot should, not that it should be the same structure as every plot. You need to establish something the character wants, have them take steps to achieve it, throw some obstacles in their way, and ultimately have them achieve the thing or not achieve it. Conflict is as important in subplots as it is in the main plot. So important, in fact, that... Tip number two. Make sure the subplot has enough conflict. Your characters shouldn't feel too much relief that they were assigned a subplot, because these plots need to have conflict just like the main plot. While the stakes of subplots tend to be, and most of the time should be lower than the stakes of the main plot, there should still be stakes. Subplots that lack tension, conflict, or stakes are going to be boring for the reader the same way that a main plot that lacks those things will also be boring. Even if you're writing a subplot that is meant to be purely expository, like a character going off to find out something about the world or track down some element of their backstory, it needs to have some conflict. It doesn't need to be earth-shattering, but there should be something standing in the way of the character. Also, when you're thinking about the conflict in your subplots, you shouldn't forget about your main plot. Tip number three, any subplot you add should tie into the main plot. And I forgot to write a segue to tie tip number two to tip number three. The worst kinds of subplots are the ones that could be removed from the story without having any impact on the main plot or any of the other subplots. Your subplots should enhance and be inextricably linked to the main plot. They should reinforce the theme, tone, and mood of the main plot, or provide information or character development that helps to resolve the main plot. 
you'll see some people argue that subplots aren't actually a thing because good subplots are so closely linked to the main plot that removing them would disrupt things so much that they're technically just part of the plot. While I agree with the sentiment of this idea, I think the effect of a well-written subplot is that it blends so well into the main plot that you can't extract it. But for the purposes of writing and revision, I think it's easier to think of subplots as separate plots within the main plot. This is going to help you to organize these things and figure out where problems are. That being said, you still need to make sure that these subplots and main plot are closely tied together. Make sure the events in the subplot have a profound impact on the main plot. If a character goes through a change or overcomes a flaw in a subplot, that development should directly help them solve a problem in the main plot. If your subplot exposits some new information, that information should help with the resolution of the main plot. The most surefire way to do this is to try removing the subplot from the story and seeing if everything can still play out the same. If it does, then the subplot isn't close enough to the main plot and you need to add in a few more connections. It's kind of the same thing as I talked about in the character agency video. If you have a character that can be removed completely from the story and that story will not change, then that character likely doesn't have agency because they're not affecting the events of the story. It's the same thing with subplots. A subplot needs to have an effect on the main plot, otherwise it's just dead weight. The one possible exception to this is romantic arcs. A lot of relationship plots really don't have an impact on the main plot of the story. They might work to provide resolution or audience enjoyment or author wish fulfillment, but if you sit down and look at this objectively, a lot of romance plots could be removed without impacting the story. At least as far as the main plot goes. You can have things related to character growth or character arcs, but if as I said before, if those character arcs or character growth don't actively help to resolve the main plot, then your romantic subplot isn't technically necessary. I'm not saying all romantic subplots do this, and you'll notice that I've omitted any examples here for fear of that very discussion. Just like I apparently feared writing a conclusion, because I didn't do that. You'll notice a lot of the stuff I talked about today that goes into writing a good subplot are the same things that go into writing a good main plot. You need to have stakes, conflict, obstacles, the characters need to be actively engaged, all of the events need to have an impact on the story. The only real difference with subplots is that they are subordinate to the main plot of the story, which is probably why they're called subplots. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.